Hello everyone. I just got uh, all this gear set up, so I want to do a quick and dirty video. Um, I'll probably do some more in-depth ones as uh, things go on, but uh, I was pretty excited to get everything working uh, over the last couple days, so I just wanted to kind of give a roller coaster ride through what this thing exactly is. Um, I am barely, you know, really not at all a physicist or a mathematician, but what I am is curious. So, um, very curious about properties of light, um, physics in general, quantum mechanics. So, not being content to just read about it, I had to buy some gear of my own and uh, got all of this from Thor Labs. It's a premier supplier of uh, bulk optics uh, equipment. Um, all of these pieces are extremely well made. Um, all this hardened aluminum pieces, posts. This is a post. As you can see, all the components are on. The breadboard is solid aluminum, punched. Probably weighs about 30, 30 40 pounds by itself. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm not going to uh, dig too deeply into what this is. And some people may actually recognize what, what these things are, but uh, probably a lot of you are like, what the heck is this contraption? So I'll just explain real quick overall what it is. Uh, this is a Mox Zender uh, interferometer. Okay, yeah, that explains a lot, right? So it's actually a very simple device. Um, without explaining a lot, I'm just going to switch it on here. Uh, and what we see, we've got two spots of light down here. I've got the laser down here. So let's see what the laser is actually doing. So laser come through here it gets expanded this convex optics it hits a splitter which splits the laser into two paths a lower arm which comes up a upper arm which gets reflected into here and then the output gets, is shown on these two screens so uh, what an interferometer is good for is really being a really fine-tuned sensor. If you all watch the news on LIGO, LIGO is basically just a giant Michelson interferometer. Um, they have all sorts of applications um, for analyzing uh, basically different subjects, whether that be a gas or a fluid, sensing vibrations, uh, doing self-modulation of light in terms of phase or amplitude. So these are actually, you know, and, and that gets applied in, you know, either analyzing something or uh, basically transmitting signals uh, uh, for different mediums. So they actually have a lot of applications. This thing just looks weird because it's actually just blown up to human-sized proportions where you can actually see not only the light, but uh, the manipulation of it. So going through the components here, um, got the laser the convex lens that just expands it so otherwise those would just be dots at the end uh, this is a this this corner right here and this corner are 50 50 uh, beam splitters so what that means is half of the light is actually transmitted and half is reflected um, this here and this here on the opposite corners are just silvered mirrors so they just simply reflect and these are actually uh, polarization uh, linear polarization filters and we'll get to those in a bit right now they're basically just both set to pass through so the light is not paying them any heed um, and this this is also just another uh, polarizer uh, and those are just basically just two pieces of plastic so uh, why I got this was uh, uh, Thor Labs you can buy a bunch of bulk optics but they also do uh, educational packages to kind of demonstrate various properties of, uh, of light. Um, and this one, uh, Mach Zender is really good at demonstrating a lot of things, uh, but being an interferometer, one thing it's really used for is uh, a lot of quantum optics and a lot of quantum optics experiments. So Thor Labs put together this, this kit to basically demonstrate what a quantum eraser is now. What is that? Well, let's actually take a look. So, again, the light's coming down, and it 
can, it basically has four different outputs. So two outputs, it will, it'll either go through the lower arm or the upper arm. If it goes through the lower arm, it'll hit this splitter, but it'll actually at this point either reflect or transmit, and that goes for the upper arm as well. And what that means is when the light recombines here, it interferes with itself. And you can visibly see this in the form of interference fringes, where the light is amplifying itself and canceling itself out. So here they are on the screen. If I actually tap on the breadboard slightly, you can see the fringe flicker. And that's because the vibrations that I'm sending through the device are causing phase shifts in the light so that it no longer interferes with itself. And you can actually see that on this screen as well. So you can see how such a sensitive instrument is actually very useful. Um, and that's why, like for example, at LIGO, an interferometer was useful in detecting actual con uh, expansion, contraction of space time. <laughs> So, um, but the purpose of this particular kit is to actually demonstrate something um, related to the nature, the wave-like nature of light. So, there are two po uh, possibilities that the light goes down, uh, as, as mentioned before, the upper and lower arm. And because these polarizers are set at the same angle, the light that meets here in the splitter is basically identical and so it will interfere with itself and that's how we get the fringes. Now what happens is if I take this guy I'll actually turn him to where he is orthogonal to the other guy in the upper arm so we'll turn him 90 degrees our interference fringes went away Now, that's because the light actually is not able to interfere with itself anymore because the polarization states have changed. So we actually know, it's almost like that the light actually knows um, which, you know, basically, basically it's marked. Essentially, it's like, oh, okay, I know, you know, this is horizontal, horizontally polarized. I know this is vertically polarized. And so they can't overlap or interfere with each other. The weird part is, classically, what you would think is, okay, you know, if if these were if light were a particle moving through this, it's like okay, stage one here, you know, stage two here, stage three, and then stage four is finally on the panels, and so you would think that the light would have no recollection after it's past this point of what would happen, but. What a quantum eraser does is it totally throws that out the window. So now I'm going to actually erase what I did on the lower arm. Look at that. The interference fringes come back. Only in this arm though. We've recovered the information uh, in this upper path, but not on uh, the right path. And this can be explained classically with the waves interfering with each other, but at a quantum level, if we were actually sending single photons through this contraption, we would actually get a buildup with the same interference fringes. And that's because at the quantum mechanical level of light, what's happening is a single photon would not just go through the lower arm or the upper arm, it would go through both simultaneously. Now, when one is marked, as we've changed the polarization down here, all of a sudden we've changed the state of that photon um, to where it's not the same when it reaches here, therefore it's not going to interfere with itself. But, the weirdness comes in with the eraser. We've actually changed the probability, just the probability of the system by erasing this measurement down here, basically negating it. Um, so what happens is 
the light interferes with itself and you know we you see the result that we get uh, there's a lot of depth to go in here uh into here but this has already been a 10 minute video um i, I know a lot of my explanation was kind of hand wavy and like i said it was going to be a roller coaster um there's a lot more visual demonstrations i could do to kind of show what's exactly going on here um but yeah i was really happy to get all this set up i'm working um and i'm anxious to play with it some more and add on to it and kind of demonstrate some other things so anyways yeah there you go so here i'll do this again because it's just so it's so cool so i'll put i'll reset all these guys Back to the same polarization, so the light has no idea to go through the upper or the lower path. He's already zero. So there's our fringes again. Yeah. So now I'll destroy that interference. You can still see some of it because the alignment's not completely optimal. And normally you would actually see um, uh, a ring pattern for the interference, but I haven't aligned it to where the, the path lengths are um, completely the same. And that would take nanometer precision and that I just don't have instruments to do that. So it's hyperbolic for now and that's fine for demonstration purposes. So. And then we'll just go ahead and negate the fact that we marked the lower path. And there come the fringes again. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Anyways, cool. Thanks. I'll have a uh, yeah. I'll have more forthcoming probably on my blog, probably on Twitter. But anyways, yeah.